Okay, so we're going to start looking directly at the Java programming language. So what I'm I'm trying to do here is to give you a, a an idea or a picture of where Java fits in the world of computer science. Uh, there's lots of different languages you might want to use when you're programming computers. The languages I've used through my career is I started off with this very strange language called Forth, and I was uh, writing software for handheld meter reading. Uh, like uh, electric meters and water meters. Um, switched over to C++ and I coded maybe about 14 years in that language. Uh, but I've tried lots of other languages like uh, VB.net, C Sharp. Uh, but our topic here is Java and Java is a very unique programming language. It's, it's, it's quite different than, well the syntax is similar to C if you program in C and C++, but the way it's implemented is much different. The architecture is very strange. I want to go over today a little bit about the Java programming language. First thing people like about Java is it much it's much more simple than maybe programming in C and C++. Uh, those languages are challenging. Uh, they give you a lot of rope, but you can really you can hang yourself really easily coding in C++. So what Java original intent was to make a simplified C++. It says safe. I don't know if I believe that completely because uh, Oracle seems to be updating Java every other day because of security concerns. But it's generally safe perhaps. Now this is the, another main reason Java was created. It says write once, run anywhere. Uh, it's because it's platform independent. Well what is a platform? A platform is like the PC is a platform, and then um, a Mac is a platform, an iPhone is a platform. So these are different ways of providing uh, content to a user. What's the cool thing about Java is that you can write a Java program generally for a PC and it will want, run the exact same way on a Linux box or on a, a Mac. So it's platform independent. The school system uses Synergy to take attendance and do grades and stuff like that. That's your student view. But not all the computers in the district are PCs. In fact, most are, are Macs. And Synergy works the same on both the PC and the Mac. And so districts choose Java as its main implementation language because it works the same on both platforms. Even if you have a Linux box, it would work that way. Anything cool about Java is this vast library of, of, of code that you can take advantage of. A lot of programmers, especially beginning programmers, uh, might think that they have to write all this code from scratch, but what you'll find is the Java library has a lot of code already written for things most people want to do. Uh, utility programs, things like that, or libraries. So part of learning the Java language is to learn at least the size and the scale of the, the Java libraries. They're really quite complete. Another thing Java was designed for is for the internet. Obviously the internet is kind of like the new operating system. People ask me what the what's the current uh, platform I should be writing my code to. Should I write it for a PC? Should I write it for a Mac? Should I write it for a Unix or a Linux box? Which platform should I choose? Well the new platform for writing software is the internet itself basically a browser. Most of the applications we run nowadays seems to be going through a browser, like if you're doing Google Docs or something like that. Well Java was designed to work with the internet and with browsers right at the beginning. You can run a Java applet inside of a browser and so you use your Java language and the, your program works right there, works right there in your browser. So for example here's an applet somebody wrote to visualize um, molecules and how they fit together. Uh, there's lots of cool applets you'll find on the internet that you can use. There's one I like particularly. It's called the Visual Thesaurus. You ever seen that one? You type in a word and it shows you a diagram kind of like this. It shows you the related words and how, how closely they're related. It's pretty neat. I think that's implemented in, in an applet. Here's some of the years. Uh, Java version numbers are really quite strange. They start out with 
1996. I was actually there at the convention when they introduced Java for the first time. It's called Java One. I was part of the convention. That's how old I am. Yikes. Um, then they went to version 1.1, 1.2, but suddenly at 1.4, they switched to 5. <laughs> so now uh, we're on version, I think 8 just came out. We're going to focus on 7. Small library changes and library improvements. Um, now the initial versions of Java had lots of problems. The the mantra we're saying write once run anywhere uh, actually turned into write once debug everywhere. Okay, it was quite a mess. So they try to fix a lot of those problems uh, using in in, in version 1.2 they added a new windowing environment called Swing, and then the ability to have large collections of objects. Uh, here's another important one: assertions XML kind of was a hot thing back in 2004. And then they added generics uh, right here. We'll get to those topics and get def definitions of what they mean. But. Now, in these slides, they have these things called self-checks. Uh, it's an, a way to see if you're understanding the material. So we talk about something, and then we do some self-checks to see how well you're understanding. So what are the two, what are the two most important benefits of the job language? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the libraries are great. There's so much cool code in there that uh, you don't have to write. You can just use. Yeah, what do you think, Joe? Yeah, so it's platform independent. It can you can write the code and it works everywhere. How many how many devices use Java or have devices or have Java embedded inside them? Anybody have a clue how many? Yeah, it's over a billion devices. That's a pretty functional language. Uh, I personally, and I try not to put my personal beliefs into these things, but uh, I don't like Java. Uh, it seems odd for a Java teacher to say I don't like it. Um, my problem with Java is it's really slow. And we'll talk about why it's so slow. I tend to like to code for speed, not for platform independence. From a user standpoint, it doesn't matter to the user that it's multi-platform because they're on this platform and they want that one to work fast. Problem is Java is not fast. Okay, So if you're doing something in real time or something that requires speed, uh, Java would be a poor choice. But Java it has its place and for me as a programmer, uh, programming language is a tool. It's, it's like if you don't need it to be fast but you need it to be cross-platform, then you code it in Java. If you just want to focus on a single device and you need it to be fast, then you might use C++. So language is just a toolbox. And languages come and go. You know, everybody thinks this is a Java programming language class. Now this is just a programming class. We just happen to be using Java. The programming languages are now becoming more and more similar. So we learn Java, we learn the other ones too. So safety and portability, that's good. And also the library. I would agree with Dialante, that's a good one. How long does it take to learn the entire Java library? Oh, it's a trick question. No one person can learn the entire library. It's too large. Say you're writing a, a, a video game in Java. They have libraries for that. Say you're writing a transaction processor for a bank. They have libraries that do transaction processing. Maybe not specific for a bank, but you can use a lot of that same material. Like if you bank at First Tech Credit Union or uh, some of the larger banks, I wrote a lot of bill payment and presentment software so that you can go to your bank and you can see your bills and you can pay them all electronically. I design systems to do that. I'm not a typical high school teacher. I actually came out of industry. Uh, so what I'm teaching you programming uh, stuff, it's stuff you really need to know if you're going thinking about being a computer scientist or a software engineer. I'm kind of like the voice of experience when it comes to programming because really I used to make my living doing this. Uh, I kind of miss teaching, so I, that's why I switched over to teaching computer science, not actually doing it every day. Okay, so we tried this uh, program the other day, uh, two days ago. Uh, we're trying to get the computer to say hello. And what we're going to do is we're going to deconstruct this a little bit and see what these different parts mean. 
Now, up to this point, if you took uh, Game Design 1, we had these little graphical icons we could pull across and plop somewhere. Uh, that's a nice way to program when you're starting out. But most programming languages are just a text file. It's weird that you write a text file like you're writing a, a, a reminder note using Notepad. You can use Notepad to create Java source files. Uh, we're going to be using an IDE called uh, NetBeans, but uh, basically, all that is a glorified text editor. It just uses a courier font right here. So a courier font, um, which means all the letters are all the same width. The letter I is the same width as the letter capital W. Why do we use that font for programming? It keeps everything lined up. You can indent in the, and you can see what belongs to what. So when we try this, remember we we got it to say hello world. That way we know we wrote the software correctly and the compiler's working and we, we actually have things actually happening. So let's look at this short program and see if we can identify some of the parts to it. So first you have to, to create something called a class in Java. And classes uh, basically make up the fundamental building blocks of Java. You're writing a program in Java, you have to use classes. There's no way around it. So we need to get a definition of what a, a class is. Yeah, the class has a main method in it. So there has to be one class in your Java program that has the main method. Okay, so we have public class hello printer. Okay, so public, what that means is that code from outside of this class can get access to this class because it's a public class. The word class, which is a keyword, saying, hey, this is a class. And then the next thing that happens after the class, you say the name of your class. So we have this class that is called hello printer because it prints out hello world. The class declaration starts like that, and then every source file must contain at most one public class. So they separate. If you want to create another class, you have to put that in a different file. So that's an important distinction. There can be only one public class per source file. Now this is the part that really bugs me about Java. It says the name of the public class must match the name of the file containing the class. If your class's name is hello printer, the file where that source resides in also needs to be called hello printer and then you say dot java so you say hello printer dot java that's the source file that has the code for the class hello printer if these get out of sync uh, you try to compile and nothing works you can spend days trying to figure out well why isn't this working and the only reason is because the name inside the file is not the same as the name outside the file and it's case sensitive which is even more annoying. Now, uh, as D. Alanti was pointing out, every Java application must contain a class that has the main method in it. Okay, you can have lots of different Java source files, lot, lots of classes, but one of the classes needs to have the main method because this is the main entry point for every single Java program you're ever going to write. It always starts with main. So when the application starts, the instructions and the main method are executed. This is the where everything begins in a Java. So that's the next thing specified in our source file. We have a method that has this structure. It says public stack void main string args. So I was at that convention back in whenever, 1996. There were programmers walking around with a t-shirt and this is what it said on the t-shirt. Public static void main string args. And no, I didn't buy one. But they were just saying, hey, this is a new language, and this is the, the way you start the new language. Yeah, if you had the opportunity to go to those conventions, there were those, a lot of really strange people. <laughs> but uh, there was a good party afterwards, so it wasn't that bad. Food was good. Now, the first line inside the main method is a comment. And a comment is not for the compiler. In fact, the compiler doesn't care what you put there. It's not going to be that particular about it. It sees the two forward slashes and says, oh, okay, everything from here to the end of the line is a comment and I shouldn't compile it. It's just a note the programmer made to themselves. So if you have a really complicated program and you want to write down in English what you're trying to do in code, that's a good way to do it is you put in comments in your code. Now, I've worked with the programmers that don't comment their code. They last about a month and then they are gone because you're not really just writing it for yourself but the other people that have to modify change and maintain your code 
if you don't comment your code, all you have is this code and you don't know what its original intent was. So in, uh, comments are very important when you're creating programs. That the compiler ignores any text uh, between the two slashes and the end of the line. So this is where you can type stuff in English and say, hey, you know, right here, I'm going to be displaying uh, the string hello world. And then you show the code for that right underneath. So what are comments uh, used for? Basically, that's your audience is a human, not the computer. So a human reader later on has to maintain the code two years later. The comments are to help remind the human what you wrote. Now there are programs that I wrote maybe 15 years ago that sometimes I have to go and resurrect and make some changes to. So I go into the code and since I commented really well 12 years ago, I can understand, okay, what was I thinking when I was doing this 12 years ago? So a lot of times comments are a message back to yourself sometime in the future when you have to change the code. Next up is the brackets. If you look on your keyboard, there's a couple characters you don't use very often. And if you shift, if you hit shift and the two uh, keys right next to the letter P on your keyboard, those are called curly braces or curly brackets. They're square brackets that aren't curly like that. And the question is, why do they use these strange punctuation? A lot of these symbols were uh, keys on a teletype. Teletype was kind of interesting. It had a, it was like a printer, but you would type into it and it would show what you typed on the piece of paper, printed out on the paper, and then the mainframe would respond, or maybe another programmer or a program, and it would type a response. And so you didn't have a screen, you had a piece of paper that would scroll up and you could interact with the computer that way. And yes, actually, I use, I use one of those for a while. But a lot of these characters come from that keyboard. When you see programming languages, they limit themselves to just the keys you see on your keyboard. No special characters or anything like that. It has to be on the keyboard or you can't program. So each main method has a set of curly braces to show the beginning and the end of the method. And then each statement in the program ends with a semicolon. Now there are other languages out there and they don't use semicolons like bb.net. But in C and C++ and derived, derived languages like Java, usually a semicolon will represent the end of a statement. You've told the computer to do something, and then you have to say, okay, I'm done with that one. Now let's go on to the next one. Now, statements are executed one at a time in the order that they appear in, in the code. So what you're doing when you're programming is you're giving a, a list of commands to the computer to execute. And you do that by writing statements. And the computer goes through one statement at a time and executes each statement. It does what you tell it. Now, finally, we're inside our main method and we want to print out hello world. So we call, there's an object called system.out, which is the output stream. By default, it's wired up to the command line or maybe the output window. Dot print line, which is the method that you want to call. Print line prints a line of text, and then inside the parentheses, you say what you want to print. The Java runtime environment will take that program and spit out a line of text that says hello world. Except it's also going to include the exclamation point. I think this slide is a little bit messed up.